just start today um, and and talk quickly about uh, you know the passing of Jim Fossil. I was uh, certainly I played for Jim um, in the Giants uh, when I was there. I was drafted by him, uh, and I was four four seasons um, with him. Uh, and, you know, and just a number of things that come to mind, but probably one of the first was just the people that he surrounded himself with, uh, from coaches to players. Uh, it was, you know, one of the best experiences I ever had um, was were those years, man. Some of my best friends I ever had were there, and some of my, I mean, closest friends and some of the best coaches I ever had were there. Um, you know, but you, you think about some of the people that he had surrounded himself with just from a coach's standpoint, you know, certainly Sean Payton, um, John Fox, Mike Pope, who I thought and think still is the best tight end coach that ever coached this game. Uh, Jim McNally, legendary old line coach. I was on staff uh, at the time, uh, not on staff, but as a player, and then certainly I'm a coach. Jason Garrett was our, our number two quarterback. Um, and then just from a player standpoint, I mean, you know, Michael Strahan, Jesse Armstead, Michael Barrow, um, Jeremy Shockey, Glenn Parker. We added Lomas Brown was the year we went to the Super Bowl. He was a pivotal part of us getting there. Um, you know, Ike Hilliard, Amani Toomer, um, Ron Dane, Jason Seahorn, Ron Stone, Kerry Collins. Howard Cross. So just a number of these guys that were, man, good football players, but good dudes. We had a great locker room, and that was a credit to Jim. And there was three things that I think about with him, too, as it pertains to the football side of it. In 2000, uh, we were 7-4. and four. We had actually just lost two in a row. All right, We had lost to the Rams, who were – it was greatest show on turf. Uh, and then we lost to Detroit. And, uh, and so, you know – I remember there was a lot of doubt uh, as to what kind of team we really were going to be. Philly was on our heels. Andy Reid had Philly going at the time, and uh, they were all over us. They were like one step behind us. And uh, he guaranteed that we'd make the playoffs that year, and uh, we won seven in a row. Um, you know, we beat Philly in the playoffs. So we actually beat them three times that season uh, to win the division and uh, number one in the NFC. Um, and then, you know, we, we beat – Minnesota 41 nothing the NFC championship game went on to you know later we, we lost to uh, Baltimore but it was a special season and uh, we rallied and uh, you know it's a credit to Jim and then 2001 obviously 9-11 happened and uh, you know it, it was look it affected everybody but when you were in New York City uh, it it really really hit home because we had so many people in that organization from the mayors to Jim himself to plenty of the players that had it was there was a immediate impact, uh, an instant impact on those people's lives, on all of us really. And so for him to just kind of keep us together uh, meant a lot. Uh, and then lastly, 2002 uh, possibly was the best team we had, believe it or not. But at one point we were six and six, and we had just dropped two in a row, and. Uh, we rallied together. We came together as a team, and uh, we won the last four in a row. And last game of the year, we had to beat Philly in overtime to become a wild card team, which we did. We played Sam Fran, uh, which everybody knows that game. And uh, the wild card round, we were up 38-14 late in the third. They came back and beat us. We did everything wrong at the end, but we we really did have a pretty good team that rallied to to find a way to get in. And uh, that's a credit to Jim. So. Um, you know, just thoughts and prayers to his family. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure I passed that along. So I know that was long, but I needed to say that. And so now I'll open this up to questions. Right, Corey Woods, first question. Hey, Dan, um, over the past couple of weeks, you know, from the comment about the kneecaps in your introductory press conference of last week, wearing the helmet to talk about the Grand Prix, which I thought was pretty cool. You've caught your fair share of criticism from the media. What do you think that is that some media members are missing about the way that you're trying to connect with the city? Yeah, I don't. I mean, you know, I'm honestly, I'm not worried about it. Um, I mean, I get it. There again, my my whole thing, it was it was kind of a joke. I mean, it was the helmet was sitting here. And so, but it was also like, hey, man, it's the Detroit Grand Prix. I mean, I think that would be a pretty cool deal for 
for our people, our fans to see that. And, uh, and I think if I'm associated with the Grand Prix, it's like, hey, man, that's pretty cool. And uh, so that's really as far as it went. I'm not worried about the criticism. Look, I'm going to get criticized either way. That's what you guys do and everybody outside of this world, you know. And ultimately, I'm going to be judged on wins and losses. And so um, that's just there again. I, I was just kind of keeping it light. Look, those things aren't going to happen during the season. I mean, I'm not... But right now, I'm just kind of being me. I'm having a good time with it. And uh, so I hope that answers it, Corey. Yeah, and um, it definitely does. And um, last one is that last couple of weeks ago, I was able to speak to Calvin Johnson. And he was talking about, I asked him about Aaron Glenn's comments about you guys wanting ass kickers. And he was saying that you got to have, the, that the Lions need to have that mindset. It's a violent game. You can't be a sheep out there. You got to be a wolf. What do you think about one of the all-time greats and one of somebody you played with co-signing the mentality that you're you and your coaching staff are trying to bring to Detroit well look I anytime you get comments from somebody uh like Calvin uh that that uh kind of sees it the way we we do it's a good thing and look I there's a lot of things I could say about Calvin but I think when when you here's what I always remember about Calvin man First of all, we all know what kind of athlete he was. He was he a rare athlete. And to this day, he's a rare athlete. Size, speed, length, hands, all everything. But what sometimes I think gets lost is this guy, I remember from the time he walked in, it was almost like this guy's too good to be true. I mean, he worked. He worked from the time he walked in to the time he left. He was a worker. He was smart. He put in the time. He studied. Like, he did all the things right, man. He was uh, he was unselfish. Uh so he was everything. He was a great teammate. And uh, so that, that, and then, so when you're able to have that type of mentality and that work ethic and you've got the talent he does, it's, there's no secret why he was as great as he was. John Macron. Hey, Dan, good morning. Morning. Um, I feel like we haven't talked uh, enough about the wide receivers. I'm just curious to get your sense of what you feel about that unit as a whole. And do you get a sense at all that they, did they feel that they've been uh, undervalued, or underrated? No, I look. I think that uh, that's what all this is about right now is to get a feel of who we have in this building and what they're capable of, and where do we use them, how do we use them, and that's what this process is right now. It just gives us a starting point. And so, look, I'm I'm not worried, and they're not worried about the narrative out there. I know this. There's guys that I've been impressed with. We all have as a staff just over these last two weeks, really. And uh, you know, there there's, you know, look, I. Tyrell Williams is going to be able to help us. There's things that he can do. I see it. Uh, Rashard Perriman is going to be able to help us. There's things he can do. Khalif Raymond, there's things that he can do right now that you see. Look, Bolden's impressed us as well. Uh, you know, Cephas was much better last week than the week before. Um, so, look, there's guys that are impressed. Look, you know, there again, St. Brown, you know, he, he's improving. And so, it's a steady group. It's a group that's competing every day. And, uh, you know, what does that mean? It, it, well, right now, all it means is they're getting better. And we're trying to identify who are the guys we can depend on. And, and you know, out of the guys we can depend on, how do we use them? What do they do best? And then how do we use that skill set? One final thing for me, uh, obviously, a lot of talk about culture building at this point. What's the next step in building the culture throughout minicamp and in the next few weeks here in terms of uh, culture building? Yeah, look, I think there again, the culture, it's just being around each other. It's being around each other. It's uh, them getting a feel of us as a staff and what we're looking for, and which ultimately is doing the right things and competing, 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 competing. Everything's got to be about competition, man. I don't care. You walk out there. Yeah, it's about getting to know the scheme. How do we work in the scheme? How do you use your help? But you know what? I mean, we got to win those reps. You got to win your one on ones. And, uh, when you, you get put in a scenario, this is not just go through the motions. It's like there's got to be something. There's got to be something that um, that you're, you're playing for, man. And you have to think that way every time you're in practice, every time you get put in that situation, man, I am trying to win. And that's what we're really trying to inject into these guys is, is the fact there is no such thing as a go through a rep or just line up and do it. No, no, no. You have to find a way to win on both sides of the ball. And one day you're going to win that rep offensively or defensively, and you better find a way. Now, the next time that comes up or the next day, you don't want to be the one who loses again. you got to correct that problem and move on. And uh, so that, to me, is what we're trying to build here, the culture. Thank you, and I'm sorry about Coach Fossil. Thank you. Justin Rogers. 
Hey, Dan, I'll echo that, uh, you know, condolences on Coach Fossil, and, and thank you for taking the time to to share some of your, your thoughts there. Um, wanted to to ask about buy-in um, and, and you know, that being a, a culture builder, and I think a big part of buy-in is, is creating, I guess, a sense of accountability through the roster. Uh, specifically with Jared, um, you know, the quarterback position being what it is, the, the face of the franchise, the guy that touched the ball the most. Um, what, what kind of steps have you taken in, in your early relationship with him to, to kind of um, create that, that sense of accountability and, and maybe that, you know, this team is his in a sense? I've tried to be, uh, you know, look, I've sat down with him. We've talked. We, we've talked about the offense. We've talked about plays. We've talked about, you know, things that he did at the Rams, things that he feels comfortable with, things that I like, things that I, certainly A. Lynn likes. And, uh, you know, that's step one. Step two is I've tried to go down in that quarterback room a little bit and uh, and just be down there with him as we talk through some of these looks or, or uh, you know, things that – just the way he I want him to have flexibility. I do. I want him to I want him to feel comfortable enough to say what's on his mind like you know, why are we why are we not converting these? And either I tell you this is why we're not or a hey, Lynn, this is why we're not converting these or you know what? It's a good idea. Let's do it, you know? And uh, and so I just I I want him to have open dialogue with us. I want him to have feedback. There's things that if he if he feels like this is something he can do, and we feel good about it, putting it in his hands, that's what we want to do. And because I think if you do that and you feel like he can handle it, he really does gain a lot more ownership into it. And the guys will feel that, the guys around him. And uh, and so that that's what we want. You know, I, I don't want to just put him in a box and say, no, 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 this is who you are. You have to stay in this confinement and you cannot deviate out of this box whatsoever. No, no, I want him to be able to Come out of that box at times. You got things that you feel like you can do, you can handle, we can handle as a team. Then we'll we'll put on him whatever we feel like we can put on him because I think that'll help him grow and become better. Uh, you know, as our field general. Where, where did you learn that as a coach? I mean, taking player input and and that being, I guess, a, a key component to team success. Yeah, I, look, I I think that. Uh, Look, I've been fortunate to be around as a player and as a coach, some pretty good quarterbacks, obviously, but also uh, quarterback coaches, offensive coordinators. I mean, Sean was as good as anybody about flexibility. Now, granted, we had, our, we had one of the best in the game in Drew Brees, but, but I know this, when, when they see the game a certain way and they know what we're trying to get done, and inside of that parameter, they, they, they can put their own spin on it, but yet, really, it's more than that. It's it's to know that the guys around him are on the same page as he is. That's really the critical thing. It might not even be that the quarterback can handle it. It's can our skill position, you know, can the skill handle this, the skill position, the tight ends, the receivers, can the offensive linemen, are we okay with this kill or this check and protection? And so a lot of that does fall on your quarterback because he's the one who's got to communicate these things and make sure we're on the same page. And so, um, yeah, I think a lot of that really grew in New Orleans, to be honest with you, just seeing the flexibility that we had and, and the dialogue that goes back and forth on, on uh, you know, on those things. So I, I just think, look, ultimately, you can't just turn everything over to them, but at the same time, because you, what you don't want to do is bog them down. You don't want to put so much in, in their heads, in his head, in their heads, that they play slow. That's what we don't want. But at the same time, man, to give him some tools in his toolbox that he can go to, uh, for the perfect look, um, I think only makes sense too. Thank you, Dan. You bet. Time for two more. Dave Burkett. Uh, hey, Dan. Good morning. Um, I think you guys have one open roster spot right now. Do you guys have any tryout players in camp? We do not. We did not bring in any tryout uh, for this. We just we left it as what what we have uh, what we have signed to this point. All right. Uh, you mentioned Victor Bolden earlier. What uh, I think he caught a lot of our eyes last week. What what stood out to him about uh, about him to you? Yeah, just his ability to separate. That, that's what's the most glaring. I mean, this guy can separate. He can run. He can change direction. Uh, he's been pretty good uh, offensively, mentally. Um, you know, he's like no different than anybody else. There's things he's got to clean up, but just the ability to separate clearly shows up to us. And then the last thing I wanted to ask you about was just your your depth at safety, I guess. How, how do you feel about that position? Right Listen, now? We're, <laughs> we're, that's one area where our depth is pretty good right now for sure. I mean, it's it's not the only area, but yet I would say 
just overall, we feel pretty good about that that unit as it pertains to having depth and competition. You know, uh, let the let the best men rise to the top because I, whoever the best is out of both safety positions are probably going to be pretty solid players for us. So uh, we feel real good about it, Dave. And specifically, Dean Marlowe. I mean, he's a guy that just playing in the AFC. I think maybe a lot of fans around here didn't know before you signed him. What do you what do you think you have in, in Dean? Yeah, listen, Dean. There again, it, it, Dean is one of those players that was on tape. He's he's always been solid and steady. And not only that, he came from Carolina, so I knew him well being at New Orleans. But then he goes to Buffalo, so all he knows is how to win. That's all he's been a part of is winning programs and. Uh, he knows that uh, there's a certain way to communicate, a certain way to practice, a certain way to play, and that caught our eye. But also, he was always a box safety, you know, box linebacker, box safety, you know. So if it was a dime package, he became like a linebacker on third down. But so that's kind of what he's always been, and he does pretty good at that. But, you know, we're giving him a chance to play more of this, you know, shell safety, this strong safety position where he, he's, he's a little bit more in coverage at times but has the ability to fill on the run. So we're trying to – we're trying to open up, um, you know, his repertoire, so to speak, and uh, and and see what he does. We told him we'd give him that 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 uh, you know we'd give him that the ability to compete at at one of our safety positions. So look, he's improving, and uh, he's he's honestly he's really growing too. And uh, so he look he gives us veteran leadership. He gets gives us somebody that's done it, and uh, and so look, we're happy to have him. He's done well with that transition then so far? He has. He has. Yeah. You know, he, he, you can see improvement out of him. And, and, but also, there again, he's pushing Will. He's pushing Tracy. He's pushing all these young safeties we have. And, uh, and there again, I just bring it up. The, let the best man rise to the top, you know, the best man for the job. And that's all you can ask for is competition in each room. Thank you. You bet. The last question, Eric Woodyard. Hey, what's up, Dan? How you doing, man? Good, E. For you, man, obviously it's still early in the process, but when you look at your staff, you look at all the NFL experience, have you had a specific example or a specific moment where that's benefited you yet? Where you like, like, yeah, I got these guys know what you're talking about from having that NFL experience. You know, just trying to take me through that moment of your staff as well. Uh, look, well, I think there's a number of things just to this point. Uh, there's so much, so much of what we're doing right now is trying to fill each other out, but also, you know, get our players accustomed to us and our, and our, uh, you know, just scheme on both sides of the ball, special teams as well. And so I think uh, just from, uh, you know, the way we practice, uh, you know, uh, the way that we uh, – I can tell you that, that you know, scheduling and some of the logistics and those things, I've gotten help from, from you know, A. Lynn and Deuce, and, you know, those things are invaluable. But also when you watch uh, some of these – not some of them, really all of them. I love our position coaches and, and their drills. You know, they have some uh, – I think drills that are very realistic to what you'll see on game day. You know, you're trying to make it as close as you can that'll that that helps them uh, prepare for when that time comes. So, um, and and I think that's one of the things you see. Like you will look over there, and some of Deuce's drills are like, what the? I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable. But it's everything's about dropping your pads and and having the ball tucked to your rib cage into the bicep and having to drop down low. You're getting a tennis ball coming back through. You're back over the bags. Here comes one of these big old medicine balls at you, and you got to dodge it. And so I just think there's a lot of these things that, as it pertains to the experience of the staff, um, them understanding how to, you know, how to train these guys for what they may see when uh, when game time comes. All right. Thanks, coach. Thanks, okay. everybody. Thank you.